What's good guys, it's your boy Rare, back with another very special, powerful, powerful video. In today's video, I know it's been a while since you guys have last seen me, so I just wanted to, uh, number one, come back and make some good content for you guys, and number two, talk about the week that we have lined up in the financial markets. This week is gonna be a huge week, uh, big earnings week for a lot of major, major companies. Google being one of those companies, Apple being one of those companies, Spirit Airlines being one of those companies. But also we have the infamous Fed decision, right? The infamous FOMC meeting and announcement this Wednesday, right? The Fed is estimated to raise rates 75 basis points. Uh, some people think 100 basis points. So I just want to touch on a lot of that stuff in this video. But before we get into this video, please should like, comment, and subscribe to the freaking channel if you are an elite millennial going after your goal, seeking to be and will be the first multi-millionaire in your family. It's one of your channel you want to subscribe to. Ah, this is Sandy Lynn. Subscribe to get up all things, uh, <laughs> all things finance, all things self-development, all things improvement, right? And all things just make you a better uh, person um, and just be great, man. That's all I'm all about, just being great. Uh, increasing our earning potential, becoming more intelligent, challenging ourselves, and growing to the best version of ourselves. So if that's something that you resonate with, like, comment, subscribe, and let's get right in. Like I said, what's good, guys? In this video, we're just going to talk about you know some of the major stuff going on in the financial markets this week. This week is a huge, uh, huge week for the financial markets. For those of you who are keeping up with these things, which if you're watching my channel, you probably are. Obviously, we have the Fed meeting this week, right? And unless you've been living under a rock, right? Even probably rent under a rock is probably super expensive at this point in time as well. But, you know, inflation has been a key topic going on in the financial markets. And even if you're not keeping up with stock market news, you know, the everyday consumer is seeing the impact of higher prices, right? So everyone and their mothers are talking about inflation and most importantly, how the Federal Reserve is going to respond to these higher rates of inflation. Now, like I said, we do have the FMOC, FOMC, FOMC meeting coming up on Wednesday. For that stands for the Federal Open Market Committee meeting. It's a meeting that the Fed hosts every six weeks, right? Every six weeks. So I think there's about eight of them in a year and in these meetings they discuss current economic events uh things such as gdp things such as inflation things such as the labor market things such as manufacturing and all these other different variables to determine if they're going to raise rates to determine if they want hawkish fed policy or dovish fed policy hawkish just meaning raising rates kind of like the rate the environment that we're in right now Dovish means quantitative easing and lowering the target federal funds rate. So this week we have that meeting. The Fed is going to decide if they are going to raise basis, raise the federal target funds rate uh, an additional 75 basis points. OK, and this is huge, right? It's huge because the federal funds rate essentially determines the the interest rates that we all pay on all all different sorts of types of things such as mortgages credit cards anything that has an interest rate associated with it uh is typically a byproduct of the federal funds rate right it's it's the benchmark rate and as the fed begins to raise that rates mortgages get expensive get more expensive um, any variable rate loans become more expensive uh, once they hit that fluctuating period, right, where the where the rate's going to adjust based on whatever the reference rate is at the time, right? So generally speaking, what we like to say in finance is as the Fed raises rates, the cost of capital gets more expensive. The cost of borrowing gets more expensive. Now, the whole theology behind this is essentially that if the Fed raises rates, it then makes the cost of capital more expensive. It then limits the discretionary income of consumers. And then that trickles down into everyday goods and services by essentially uh, crippling demand for products, goods and services, and by crippling that demand, driving the inflation rate down, right? So that was just a little crash course for you guys. I know if you probably watch my channel, you're probably privy to this information. So 
enough about that. So anyway, we have the Fed meeting this week. Uh, we also have the consumer confidence data coming out this week. Something else I want to mention, I think it's the conference, conference boards uh, data. I know that University of Michigan, they do consumer sentiment and the conference board does uh, consumer confidence, right? And I think this number is important to watch too. So we get this number tomorrow. Uh, once again, today's the 25th of July. So we get this consumer confidence number tomorrow. Consumer confidence is just uh, essentially a survey conducted by uh, the conference board in which they uh, reach out to households and ask them how they feel about the current economic environment, how they feel about their own financial situation, right? And based on this, they kind of do some fancy tricks with an index. They generate a number, and this number is meant to measure essentially the uh, state of mind of the everyday consumer. And the interesting thing about this consumer confidence number is that it's typically, if it dips to a certain point, historically, it has been like a precursor to recessions, right? I know you guys are hearing a lot of things about a potential recession that could be happening some point in the future. And typically this consumer confidence number dips below 100. When that happens, it's typically a precursor to recessions. If you look back historically at any previous recessions that we've been in, you'll also you'll often notice that the consumer confidence number has dipped below a certain value, right? Which kind of was an indicator that, hey, a recession could be on the horizon. So we get the consumer confidence number tomorrow. Um, not too sure what to expect. It came in, once again, we're already below that $100 or the uh, dollars, because it's not in dollars, but we're already below that $100 uh, kind of, uh, I guess you could say, uh, threshold. Uh, that they use to kind of gauge either bullish or bearish sentiment. So we've already, we I think the last one, I have it up here, the last one was at uh, 98.7. Um, and it's expected to come in uh, two points below that, the previous consumer confidence to 96.8. So we are expecting a decline. Um, once again, consumer confidence, a good precursor to recessions as consumer confidence begins to erode. Uh, recessions tend to in, tend to follow that, right? So we have the consumer confidence number tomorrow. Let's see what else we got here. Consumer confidence, we get new home sales tomorrow as well. The big thing is just the Fed meeting, right? Like, like I said, everyone's anticipating a 75 basis point rate hike. Uh, if they come in at 100 basis points, I think it's gonna shock the market quite frankly. And I think, you know, recently the Bank of Canada increased by 100 basis points. That was like the first time since, you know, decades that they've raised rates. So, I mean, it's for me, I look at that and I'm like, well, I hope did the Bank of Canada kind of set the stage for the U.S. or the the, Fed, the U.S. Fed to 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 take the same path. Um, once again, I don't think so, but I think there is a probability that we could get a hundred basis point rate hike, especially because the last inflation data that we got came in at like 9.1%, which once again, created new highs since 1982. It seems like every time we get this number, there are new highs being created, but, um, uh, we'll see once again, the data comes out on Wednesday. So keep an eye on that and keep an eye out on how that affects your portfolio. Uh, something else I want to mention on this video before we get out of here, we'll keep this nice and short. It is earnings season, right? We are in the, um, we just witnessed the, uh, what is it? June, February, March, April, May, June. We just witnessed the end of Q2. Sorry, I got to count that shit in my head. We just entered the, key, the end of Q2. Uh, every time the quarter ends, it's earnings season, right? So we have a lot of earnings coming out this week. Alphabet is, is, Expected to report earnings tomorrow. That's Google, for those of you who don't know. We also have Apple earnings on Thursday. Uh, we have Spirit Airlines, which they've been going through a lot of uh, acquisition talks with JetBlue. Uh, the airlines have been kind of, uh, you know, I, I haven't really kept an eye on their performance lately, but obviously with things reopening, people begin to travel more. I just got back from a trip from Europe. So the airlines are fucking terrible. Uh, but with demand beginning to ramp back up for airlines, I imagine it has a positive impact on their revenue. I believe Delta just announced earnings a few days ago. Not too sure what the results were on that, but uh, you know, I'd be curious. I imagine it was relatively positive from a revenue perspective, at least 
you know, from where it was a year ago. So we have, we have Google this week, uh, Google tomorrow. We have Apple on Thursday. Anybody else worth, worth mentioning? Let's see here. Anybody else worth mentioning? We have Chipotle coming up uh, this week as well. That's going to be tomorrow after market close. Um, anyway, I encourage you guys, you know, keep an eye on earnings season, right? Uh, corporate profits is a huge indicator of economic performance. Typically, when corporate profits begin to deteriorate, it's a sign of worse things to come. So I think it's important to keep an eye on earnings season, especially if you have securities in your portfolio that are releasing earnings. For example, Tesla released earnings last week, uh, cruised right after that positive performance there. Uh, I think they had the largest month of vehicle production they've ever had in their history. So that was good to hear considering the fact that every other day, Elon Musk is in the news for something ridiculous, right? Um, whether it's Twitter or him banging the wife of some ex associate who was a CEO of some major company, crazy stuff, right? So, but anyway, you know, keep an eye on these earnings releases. I'm trying to see who else we have reporting earnings this week. Anybody else worth mentioning? I didn't think so. Really, what Cheesecake Factory? I like I like Cheesecake Factory. So, um, but yeah, a lot of companies. We have Ford releasing earnings on Wednesday as well. A lot of companies releasing earnings. I think the biggest ones that are garnering the most attention is Apple earnings release and then also Google's earnings release as well. So keep an eye out on those. But there you guys have it, guys. I'm gonna end this video here. I know it's been a while since you guys have seen my face. I'm happy to create more content for you guys. And I'm going to be more active. It's tough. It's difficult for me, right? Because I'm working full time. Plus, I'm also studying for the CFA. So a lot of my time is just being monopolized for between work, studying, gym. That's literally it, right? I'm, it's tough, but you guys know the ground. You guys know how it goes. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe, subscribe. Keep an eye on earnings season and also the Fed meeting on Wednesday. It's going to be some huge news. Could have a huge impact and will have a huge impact on your portfolio and your general overall well-being. But that's all I got for you guys, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Your boy, Ra Ray.